Welcome back, everybody, to another VATSIM 101 video, where we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite subject, holding patterns. I hear your collective groaning already, but I promise you this is not nearly as complicated as it sounds. We're going to break it all down for you, so that way the next time that controller gives you a holding pattern to fly, you'll be able to execute it like a pro. So let's talk about what a holding pattern really is. Holding patterns, very simply, are racetrack flight paths that you are going to fly around a specific fix. You're going to be told what direction to hold from that fix. You may also be told what direction to make your turns and how long your inbound course is supposed to be. Every holding pattern that you're going to fly is going to have a standard entry procedure that you're going to be expected to do, and you will also need to stay within the protected area of the holding fix. The protected area is identified as the area inside of that racetrack pattern. Holding patterns can be issued for a variety of different reasons. On the VATSIM network, it is mainly going to be for traffic and congestion. So if there are a lot of planes flying into an airport at the same time, air traffic control may start issuing out holding instructions to ensure that the capacity of that airport does not get exceeded. Happens a lot during Friday night ops or other bigger events that VATSIM puts on for the community. The nice thing about holding patterns as well is that air traffic control can hold several aircraft at one fix because everybody can be at differing altitudes. So it's not uncommon when you're flying in a holding pattern, there could be a lot of planes both above and below you. Here we have the parameters for a standard holding pattern. So if you're given a holding instruction and the controller doesn't tell you what direction your turns are going to be or how long your inbound course is going to be, you will make right hand turns one minute inbound legs. One minute inbound legs meaning that when you roll out level inbound towards your fix, it will take you one minute to cross the fix. So if we fly our outbound leg for a minute when we're entering the hold and when we turn back inbound, it takes us two minutes to get to that holding fix. We can then shorten our outbound leg to ensure that when we make our next inbound turn, it will take us exactly one minute to get to that fix. So in that example, it took twice as long as it was supposed to to get to our holding fix. We would then cut our outbound time in half to 30 seconds. That way, when we turn back inbound, we should be crossing that fix at exactly one minute. So your outbound leg can be lengthened or shortened to ensure that your inbound course is at the time it's supposed to be. So how long you fly your outbound leg doesn't really matter. The inbound leg is the most important. There are also different speed restrictions at the different altitudes that you'll be holding at. You can pause to read here. The big thing is, is that there is a difference between the ICAO standard and the standards for the United States and Canada. So if you're issued a holding instruction, just keep in mind what country you're in to figure out which one of these parameters you're going to follow. And these are your maximum speeds. So you do not have to fly exactly at this speed if you do want to fly slower. The important thing is that you do not fly faster than the speeds that are listed here. Now let's talk about everybody's favorite part about holding patterns, the entry procedure. This is what trips up pilots the most, especially when they start their instrument training. Exhibit A got held up in instrument training because it couldn't friggin' figure out how to fly an entry. In this example, we're going to be holding south of the holding fix. There are three different entries that you're going to be expected to fly, and it's all going to be based on what direction you are going to be approaching this hold. In this example, we're going to be holding south of the holding fix as seen in these charts here. So first is the easiest entry to fly. That is going to be our direct entry. So that is simply we are going to fly to our fix and then start our first outbound turn in the direction that we're going to be flying the hold. So in this example, we're flying inbound from the southwest and we're going to be making right hand turns. We fly directly to that fix, start our first outbound turn, and then we're going to fly outbound for a minute. The second easiest entry to fly is the teardrop entry. So in this example, again, we are holding south of the fix, making right hand turns, and we are approaching for the northwest. So how we would fly this entry is we would fly to our fix, and then we would fly outbound on a 30 degree intercept from our outbound course. So our outbound course is going to be 180 degrees. We'll fly at a heading of roughly 150 for that minute and then turn back inbound and fly to our fix. The hardest entry to fly, at least in my opinion, is going to be the parallel entry. And they call it the parallel entry because when you cross the fix, you're going to fly parallel to your outbound course on the opposite side of that racetrack. So in this example, we're still going to hold south of the fix and we're still coming in from the northwest, but now we're making left-hand turns instead of right-hand turns. So we will fly directly to the fix, and once we cross it, we will fly outbound on a course of 180 for that minute, and then we will turn inbound in the opposite direction that we are going to fly that hold. And that is to ensure that we stay within that protected area. So this is what makes the parallel entry one of the harder ones, is because when you make that first inbound turn, you're going to make it in the opposite direction that you're going to fly your holding 
rolling pattern. This specifically is what held me up in my instrument training, by the way. Once we fly our outbound course for a minute, we turn back inbound, cross our fix, and then fly the holding pattern as normal. Now, figuring out how we're supposed to enter this hold is actually very, very simple. And this is called the rule of thumb. First, you're going to identify what direction you're going to be making your turns. So let's say we're going to be making left-hand turns for this particular holding pattern. And let's say we were told to hold on the 330 degree radial from the Calverton VOR. So we're going to take the bottom of our thumb and put it over 90 degrees on our heading indicator on the left-hand side. So the bottom of my left thumb in this example is going to go over the 270 or the west direction on the heading indicator. From 20 degrees up, which is going to be about the width of my thumb, we are going to draw a horizontal line across the heading indicator. Then we're going to draw a vertical line from the top of the heading indicator until it intersects that line. That's going to divide our heading indicator into three different parts. The smallest section is going to be a teardrop entry. The largest is going to be our direct entry. So in this example, we are going to be holding on the 330 radio from the Calverton VOR. We are going to be flying a teardrop entry. If we're making right hand turns, we use the opposite thumb. So we take our right thumb and we put it on the 90 degree mark on the right side of the heading indicator, draw a line 20 degrees up or about the width of our thumb and draw a horizontal line across the heading indicator again and then draw that vertical line until it intersects. And you're going to notice that the heading indicator is mirrored from the left hand turns. So let's say again we were holding on the 330 degree radio from the Calverton VOR, we would now be flying a parallel entry. The more and more you do this, the easier it's going to be for you to figure it out. The way that I used to do it is I would assign myself random holding instructions while I was sitting at my kitchen table, and then I would draw it out on a piece of paper. I would pick a random fix on my chart. I would give myself a holding instruction. I would draw it out on that piece of paper. And once I was able to see it visually, it all started to make sense. Then once I got into the plane, I was able to visualize it in my head and it made it that much more easy for me to do. Everybody's got their own different ways of learning it. And you for sure are going to figure out your own way that's going to make it easy for you. So don't get discouraged. Don't be afraid. Holding patterns are nothing to be scared of. And that'll wrap it up for today's VATSIM 101 video, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And until next time, everybody, this is Cross Hyperu, signing out.